now, get ready to talk hockey. Streaming from the Oilers Live Studio. Subscribe or follow today. Hey everyone, it's Michael here from the Heavy Hockey Podcast, back with another episode, episode two of the 2021 season uh, for the Edmonton Oilers uh, of the Heavy Hockey Pod. And and I've got as my guest, uh, host of Inside Sports on 630 Chet and uh, host of uh, Overtime Open Line, uh, Mr. Reed Wilkins. Thanks and uh, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to talk to you. I uh, I enjoy your your backdrop. You got some good Oilers stuff there. The collection of hats is I actually haven't seen all those hats. Um, I definitely don't think I've seen the black one with the orange outlined oil drop. That's an interesting one. Not that I'm always up on Oilers merch. But that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a nice selection there. Pretty good. That's a uh, a source for sports. Uh, great Edmonton uh, sporting goods store. Uh, always one. So I'm based in Halifax now, and and uh, that um, I every time I'm in Edmonton, that's the sporting store to go to. I I tell you that may be one of the best sports stores in all of Western Canada, and and so a great place to get some Oilers merchandise. Well, they thanks. Don't, for... They don't sponsor the show, but <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Well, thanks for staying up late. I I didn't realize I was making you go so late. Oh yeah. No, uh, I, by if you were in Halifax, I could have I could have tried to do something earlier in the day. So no, geez, I feel is, bad now. This is a great time for me, and and now I've got to kind of train myself for the late night games, right? I mean, this is this is really uh, game time for me most nights uh, when the Oilers get on the air, and and so um, you know I just uh, I've got to start training for the late nights and and get used to it. Yeah, it makes quite a time uh, change. Makes it different. Yeah, yeah, it's three hours. I just moved out here, uh, beginning of November, and um, so I'm just starting to get used to some of the late night games. I used to, uh, I, I love to play hockey myself. I used to go out play a game, and then come back and watch the PVR. And uh, I don't know if you if you've ever PVR'd a game. I mean, you generally are, are working them. I, I would suspect. Oh yeah, not a, not an Oilers. I, I've PVR games uh, you want or, or or VHS games in the past. Speaking of which, <laughs> I remember uh, in 1996 there was the World Cup of Hockey. Yes. And Canada was playing Sweden in a semifinal. And it was the same night Def Leppard was on their slang tour and was playing at <laughs> Northlands Coliseum, or I don't, I don't know if it was Skyreach at the time, yeah, or it might have been Edmonton Coliseum. But anyway, so it was the same night as the as the semifinal, which was Canada against uh, Sweden, I believe. And I taped the game and on VHS, which I know probably some of your audience doesn't even know what that is. Yeah. So I uh, and I was going to watch it when I got home after the concert. So I went with my buddy. We went to the concert. I mean, there's no cell phones. There's no way. Like, all you had to do was not turn on the radio or not yeah. turn on the TV. And you wouldn't, there's no way you would know the score. So I, uh, I get home and uh, I called my mom and dad to let them know I was home. And they knew I was taping the game. And, of course, uh, my mom has to say, how long did you set the recording for? And I was like, I don't know, like five hours. She said, oh, you missed it. So I'm like, okay, great. Now I know it was double <laughs> oh, overtime. No, but yeah. I didn't. I taped it long enough. But it took the whole suspense out of watching the whole game because I knew, okay, this game's going to wind up going to overtime. Uh, <laughs> so I think I just kind of found overtime and, and watched that instead of – because was that when Niedermeyer scored on the end-to-end rush? I Jeez, can't remember I if that was the game now. winner. Anyway, sorry, I, inter- I interrupted your story about no, TV. <laughs> no, that's, that's all right. I – I, uh, I, all I was going to say actually to finish off that was, um, you know, the nice thing was, was when I was in Alberta and playing a late night game and PVRing, of course you're at hockey. So you're with hockey fans. And the first thing they do when they get into the dressing room now is look on the phone and somebody inevitably blurts out the yeah Oilers lost or won, more likely lost at this point right now. Uh, and now because the games go so late, I really don't have that concern. Now, the concern I have is getting up for work the next day because I've been up <laughs> to three, four in the morning watching hockey. Uh, but no, I, I, um, I much, uh, people keep saying you're going to hate the late night games. I 
I prefer them. I'm a bit of a night owl, so oh, I'm good. actually quite happy to to see that. And with this schedule, there's a lot of early games. Um, now, I assume, did, did you have you traveled with the team in the past, or do you ever travel with the team? No, I don't. I'm at home. Uh, yeah. So the only things I've gone to for work traveling is the Penticton tournament, which now they haven't had for a couple of years. Yeah. And I've gone to... I think six drafts, I think 14, 15, 16. I think that's right. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I went to because 20 was obviously a virtual draft. That was supposed yeah. to be in Montreal. Yeah. So the, yeah. Cause I was there when Leon was drafted. That was my first one in Philly because nurse was the year before oh, right in Pittsburgh, I think. So I didn't go to that one. And then obviously I was at the McDavid one and I don't like, I don't even know where the hell it was. Like, it's not Miami. It's not Fort Lauderdale. It's like, get on this shuttle bus for 40 minutes <laughs> yeah. and you get dropped off across from a, a, a park, like a, like not a park where kids play on swings or, and there's ball diamonds, <laughs> like a, pres- a res- like a, a preserved area, you know, like a provincial <laughs> yeah. park, like woods. And it's like, okay, so now we're in Sunrise, Florida. I don't know what that is. And uh, so it's like, okay, there's there's the woodland creature area over there. Like, I expect to see Winnie the Pooh coming out. Like, who grew up with <laughs> yeah. me? And then uh, I want some honey. And then it's like, okay, well, here's an NHL rink. Let's let's go inside. And so that's <laughs> that was where that, that draft was. It was like Florida nowhere trip? near anything. Yeah, we were in Miami for about an hour because the Oilers were staying there, and Shirelli did an availability. So me and um, I think Joanne Ireland and Tichkowski got a car, and you know, of course, it was some insane amount to go from Fort Lauderdale, to Miami, yeah. go hold a mic for fifteen minutes, and uh, go back up to Fort Lauderdale. So that's I, I've had people are like, "Have you been to Miami?" I was like, "Well." Technically, I've been in the city of Miami for about for about half an hour in one hotel and on some highway. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's my that's my traveling experience. Not much. Penticton and uh, and the drafts. I, I I don't travel, and I don't know if I would like to. I, I think that would take a lot out of me. I mean, it'd be yeah. neat to go to all the other rinks, but my my job is it's not necessary to travel, so it's not something I really think that I should be doing. Yeah. Now you, um, it's it's been a while since I've been uh, in Edmonton. Were you doing overtime in a pub or a, a bar at any point, or was it always uh, in studio? We've uh, well, we've done it in Studio Ninety Nine, which is yeah. a, oh, yeah. which is a restaurant. Um, so that's the only that's the only occasion. So yeah, we've done it in. Well, we did it in the old building. We were in uh, the the fishbowl, we called it. So it was yeah. at the bottom of one of the the stairs and escalators to come down to the lower level. And the order's dressing room was just, you know, maybe 60 okay, feet. Okay, I'm going to hold you on that because uh, you know Lars Calu. Yes, of course. He's yeah, very funny. What's that? <laughs> yeah, he is. Actually, he and I have known each other uh, since 1992. Oh, sweet. Uh, yeah, we've been, uh, you know, so I knew him before he ever saw you at the old arena <laughs> and you waved at him. Do you, um, it was that where you would have been broadcasting from when you, his favorite memory on Twitter, he said today was, Whoa. uh, the very last game of which I was at, by the way, I didn't even realize he was there, but I was at that game at, uh, was it, was it Rexall at the time? They, yes, I think it was still the Rexall. last game, it was still Rexall. Yeah, the last, yeah. Yeah. So you would have been in well, the fishbowl. Well, I know I Lars, like, I don't, like, not as well as you do, but I know him to go up and talk to him. And I've seen him do comedy yeah. a couple of times and sort of, uh, there's kind of one circle of friends, I think, that sort of overlaps. So I definitely know him. I, I fortunately, I don't remember waving to him, but I definitely don't see why I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I just feel <laughs> bad. I, I think Lars is just flattering me. A little bit because he's kind to me, but I, I doubt that's his actual favorite memory of an Oilers game. I mean, they, they still they still win even when they were bad. They would still win about a third of their games. Like you might see some something kind of along the way, but that's kind of large to say that. I was uh, I was a season ticket holder the year after they went uh, to the playoffs at, at Rogers. Uh, so I, you know, I was I was pretty darn excited. I, you know, they had, they went to the playoffs. They had Talbot and yeah. and I and I uh, and they started off that year uh, after 
Uh, that was when uh, McDavid had the hat trick against the Flames opening night. Yeah, but then they lost the next four games. Yeah, badly. They, in the, yeah, Three or so. four, anyway. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was tough. I thought they were gonna like. I actually thought they were gonna be good that year. Like maybe not Stanley Cup good, but maybe finish first in the division good. Well, there and they, a lot in, that said that they would right be a contender. Well, I think Frank Cervelli picked them to win the Stanley Cup with uh, with TSN <laughs> or he might have. I think he was with he, TSN then. Yeah, I'm sure he was drinking that. that yeah, <laughs> but the the thing is now this year I'm. I was pretty confident they were going to have a good team and they, they started bad again. The, the, the other two years last year and 16, 17, when they made the playoffs, I wasn't so sure they were going to. And I felt pretty, I was feeling pretty good about this year. So we'll see. It hasn't started well though. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely not. And, and, you know, it's funny. Cause I, of course I put out there that I'm going to have you on, on the pod tonight and, and uh, anything relevant. And, and there's a little bit of a love fest for you going there, Reed, where, uh, Jalen and I even uh, popped in, said you're one of the most amazing humans uh, she knows. Well, uh, that's how I feel about her. That's very it, kind. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's great. I think, um, you know, and as I, as I said on there, you know, I think, and, and um, not to take away from you, of course, but I think in Edmonton, we're lucky, or as Oilers fans, we're lucky to have the media we have, uh, you know, for what's considered really a small market. Right. Like to, um, you know, I've lived in some other cities and and uh, just the um, the Oilers media and the, and the folks around, and including yourself and, and uh, the team, the whole team there at Chad. You know, we're really lucky uh, in, in that way. Um, but, you know, I I, um, I guess. Right. Like when you're when you're out there and you're and you are. If, you know, you're, you're broadcasting. You've been doing this. Uh, how long have you been on the Oilers broadcast team? Uh, this is my eighth season doing this job. Eighth season. Yeah, so I've done and seven. Yeah. And you were, uh, were you doing sports prior? Most of my career, not immediately prior. Well, yes, because I was doing Bob Show for two years, producing Bob Show. But I, I was, uh, I, I mean, I worked in Lloyd Minster, and I was a sports television and radio, mostly television. And then in Edmonton, I was at uh, City TV doing everything, producing, writing, shooting, reporting, whatever they needed. Not a lot of sports specifically because they didn't really have a sports department per se. And then uh, at Ched and iNews 880, as it was known at the time, I was primarily news. But then when Oilers Now came over to Ched, um, Bob called me and said, would you want to produce my show? And I said, well, yes, but I think no disrespect, but I don't think that's your call. I think we got to talk to some people here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they said, uh, and they said, yeah. And I mean, that was just cause Bob, I, I knew Bob from the late nineties. Uh, while I was going to aid volunteering on some golden bears broadcast at CJSR oh, nice. yeah. and we didn't really stay in touch. Like we would run into each other and, and say hi, but we kind of knew what the other guy, I mean, clearly his career had just completely, uh, uh, you know, took off in that early part of the century, I guess. So, he said, would you like to produce my show? So I said, yeah. And then two years I did that. And then I got this ex exact job. Yeah. So most of my career has been in sports for sure. So, so, so you've known Bob for a while. What's it like to work with a guy that's got the internet in his brain like him? Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, you know, I, I got to thinking, I, I saw that you'd sort of started in the industry in 2000 and, and, um, and I thought he, like, I went and I looked it up. What was the internet like in 2000? And there was, uh, you know, just to go through a couple of things I found, there's about 350 million people actually use the internet. You'd, you'd log on with 56K modem, if you remember that. And so there was no uh, DSL or anything like that. And I, and I vaguely remember. I mean, I've been using it probably since 93. I was an early adopter, but... But, you know, it's certainly the people that would call into like a overtime open line. Uh, they weren't, um, you know, they weren't following blogs and, and podcasts and video and, and getting all of this information. Uh, and you didn't have that at your disposal either, mind you, right? I mean, yeah, like, I mean, that's what was that like compared. Well, it was it was different. And it's amazing how much. uh how now just all the information is at your fingertips. I remember 
yeah, I, like I, I think when I started in Lloyd, I don't know if we could go online. And then, yeah, you'd have to dial up at your workstation and then get <laughs> off when you were done because I think there were only so many lines oh, yeah, into the yeah. newsroom or, or maybe you could only do it on so many computers. Uh, so I, I remember even the, the first spring I was there, so the Lloyd Blazers had a really good AJHL team, but they lost in the North final to Fort McMurray, who then hosted the Royal Bank Cup and won it. So once they won their region, they could add a third goaltender to their roster off somebody that was from their region. So they actually added Dustin Schwartz off the Blazers, oh, nice. who's now yeah. the Oilers goalie coach. Uh, now, I didn't get to know Dustin very well there because I, I got there during the during the playoffs, but uh it's kind of an interesting connection I have with him. But I can remember when the Royal Bank Cup was in Fort McMurray and I was doing morning radio, I had to go check the faxes that had come in overnight for the scores because they faxed the game sheets. <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't just like log on to the website. Yeah. Okay, there, there they are. So I remember doing that. And I also remember um, we had one email address, news at cksa.com. <laughs> CKSA. yeah. so, ev so everybody shared this email address. So you wouldn't use it very much, but every once in a while, someone would say, we'll email you or you might, I don't know. So I remember once one, one guy we were working with started using the work email to sign up for all these re rewards programs, like with <laughs> Hudson Bay and, yeah. you know, uh, Mark's Work Warehouse. Because one day my, my buddy and I, who I actually went to Nate with, and then we worked together in Lloyd for a few years, like he needed to check that we were in on a weekend and he's like, I got to check the work email for something. And then we're like, what are who signing up for all like somebody's this guy's using the work. E and then, and then to, to top it off, this, the same individual signed up for a uh, 48 hour weight loss program <laughs> using <laughs> yeah. the work yeah. email. Yeah. And I, it was called 48 hour diet. And I was like, first of all, do you allow profanity on this? Cause I do this. Oh, yeah. This, no, this works better if I use the actual down. work. So, yep. so my, so my, I'm like, what is this? Like he signed up for this weight loss program and we're reading this thing and it's like, okay, you're going to get this delivered to your house. And then all of a sudden my, my buddy's like, oh my God, I've, I've heard about this. It's just some liquid you like a drink you order and you drink it Friday night and it just makes you shit all weekend. And that's how <laughs> yeah, you yeah. lose weight. And then of course, you know, your body gets back to normal and then you got to drink the shitting juice again for the next week. And fill. So so we had to tell this guy, like, don't sign up for all this stuff using the word email. <laughs> a, like, it's taking up space. And B, it's like, maybe, you know, this is something you're doing on your, on <laughs> yeah, your, on your own time. Personal, yeah. But you asked about Bob. Uh, yeah, I mean, Bob is, his mind is incredible. Like, I, he's obviously got some sort of a, a just, just a natural gift for not just remembering stuff but so many details and connections and histories of players and all that kind of stuff so it's actually um it's it's nice to work with that i gotta remind myself i, I think especially more so the first couple of years i was doing it where it's like okay don't just rely on bob like you gotta have you know your own prep and <laughs> yeah, contribute yeah. so don't just be like ah oh, i got oh my god i got five extra minutes oh just ask bob random stuff but yeah, he's uh, and, the, and the interesting thing about Bob is, and I think for most people who uh, are are really successful like he is, like what what you hear on air is basically what you get in in real life. I mean, that's Bob. I mean, you have to be. I think to be a talk show host, you have to be fairly genuine most of the time. I mean, clearly you're going to be a little <laughs> different, and there's presentation uh, involved. So you know, like some I remember somebody asked me that. It's like. Uh, it's some actually, you know, not to criticize Bob, but we all have our detractors. He said, Oh, somebody, I can't stand Bob. Like, what's he like in real life? I said, well, I said, if you can't stand him on air, I'm not going to bother introducing <laughs> to him. You probably yeah, wouldn't yeah. like him in person either. That's, you know, I mean, that's what he's like. That's who he is, but that's why his show works. Right. Yeah. You know, um, I read something the other day that, uh, I wasn't quite sure how I felt about it and, uh, kind of brings it to mind. It's, it's like, if, if uh, if everybody likes you, you're doing something wrong, <laughs> right? Well, I think that's yeah, yeah. I think that's true. Yeah, and and I think in your job, right? I, like I think that's so valuable, right? Um, you know, I mean, nobody made it more clear than Howard Stern, right? Like, right. you know, I mean, that's kind of I think when you know people realize like, hey, you need to have an opinion, right, to be good at 
be good at this job and, and, and do what you do. And frankly, I, you know, I'm not that guy. I could probably never do what you do because, uh, you know, I, I, I'd probably stew over the fact that, um, you know, if I had thousands and thousands of listeners and somebody said, and I said something to piss off, you know, 90% of them, I'd probably think about that for forever. And, and I, I imagine, you know, over time, you've probably had some moments where you've said some stuff that made some people angry or, or whatever. Uh, you just got to move on, right? Like I, Bob, Bob's made me angry at times, and then other times I, you <laughs> well, know, he makes me angry sometimes too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but I think and that's that, good, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that that is. Um, I mean, no matter what you do, there you're going to have people that don't like it. I mean, if you own a restaurant or if you're a teacher, like we're all everybody's always ranking everything in their head. Everybody has a favorite <laughs> yeah. something, a least favorite something. I like this or I, or I don't like this. I, I think that uh, I, I feel like I've always been relatively uh, thick skinned. And then I think I had to just get a little thicker skin, probably just through the first year of doing it. And then, yeah, you just realize it. Like it's, sometimes it just doesn't matter. Like people just hate you or they hate your station or they hate your colleague, but they think it's you that said it. So like you can't, it, it, I, I have just found that the, the, the thing for me is just generally not to engage because it's, it's it, I honestly think it's a waste of time to argue with people online or yeah. on, on a text or, or whatever. Uh, like occasionally I might say something back to somebody, but it's usually more sarcastic or dismissive. Just kind of like, OK, buddy, like, thanks. I read this now. <laughs> go yeah. away. You know, yeah. like one guy when, when we were going through the thing with the the. Uh, the double E football team name change in the summer. Oh, like yes. this guy just <laughs> several days in a row, like, you know, like you're a little bitch. You're, you're a, you know, you're a politically correct. You're I you know, I hate you. Typical radio host, like just over yeah. and over again, you know, and it's just like, okay, whatever. And then, so finally one night, <laughs> he's like, he, he, he texted probably five, every five minutes. So finally I wrote back, I was like, Hey man, thanks for sticking around for the whole hour. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, then, and then he did he really didn't like that he really didn't like that but sometimes you're just gonna be like okay like i'm not gonna argue with you like good for you like bravo <laughs> yeah so it doesn't happen the, very the, often with i, I me, will so i will say this to be totally candid the the one thing that bugs me some sometimes uh is is if i if and, and generally, it would be something that somebody would text to the show because I really don't look at a lot on Twitter or or other stuff like that. But if somebody is is criticizing me or unhappy with me for something that I know I didn't say, you know, oh, yeah. or or the, or where they've under like that that bug because like hey, you don't like me, you don't like me, but well, you're you're basing this criticism of me or this hatred of me on something that's not even true. But I also have had to set, accept like okay, you're not going to get through to that person. They're not going to read the text if i write a text back saying oh hey i didn't say that like you're they're already done with you you know so you just gotta be like all right fine you know maybe a week from now they'll think i said something brilliant that i didn't actually say and <laughs> yeah, then, yeah they'll be, both ways, right? then they'll be happy again but <laughs> yeah anyway i can't remember I, what your uh, original question was but I, I, I don't know either i you know there was uh i have to laugh because uh you've been doing uh over time i remember when um like John Short and and uh, and those guys were doing it back uh, growing up in Edmonton and and my dad uh, and he's passed away good man um, uh, you know I loved him obviously uh, but he was he was a drinker like an evening drinker and uh, he would oh he was so embarrassing he'd call in <laughs> you know, he was the guy that would call in and your screener would never let him through right like oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I I do recall him being on once or twice, and to, and I I believe it was John Short, and just totally frustrating him. And I've always, uh, I guess, in some way, and I said this, I, I think he must be the most patient man I know. But I've always had a little bit of respect for, um, yeah. I lived in Calgary for a while, you know, the guy that uh, that does that that show after and and, and that, and and you know, I even listened to Bob's show uh, once in a while. Uh, it's not at a great time for me to listen, but, but, uh, you know, he'll have the call in shows and, and you get these sort of recurring callers. And I'm sure my, my dad was one of them 
uh, bless him. He was a good man, but, but you know, you just got like, but you still take the call and I admire that, right? Like I admire the fact that you can, but is there ever a time and you don't have to play, but there's gotta be the odd time where you're just like, can't we just screen this person this time? Like, can't we screen them out? Or Well, have- yeah, definitely there is. I mean, we did, we for sure have some guys who beat the same drum over and over again, no, no matter what, yeah. and have the guys on the team they hate, and it's always going to be their fault no matter what. I, I think, you know, there's certainly – there are some guys I've, I've got into it with, or, or I, you know, or I know if, if I hear them going down that path again and it's just like, okay, you know, and Kellen Kennedy, my op, he knows when he knows my code words (laughs) or my tone of voice where it's just like, okay, yeah, yeah. Thanks. You know, like usually if I say thanks for the call, you're done. Um, and it either means that that was a really good point and I have nothing else to say, or I just think you're not even worth, worth talking to, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I think that it's just something, I mean, you, you learn how to do it and I'm still, it still evolves, right. And you don't treat everybody the, the, the same way. I mean, there was a guy and he actually has already called this year who, uh, <laughs> He, he just hated Cam Talbot. Just hated Cam Talbot. Oh, yeah. Cam Talbot was a piece of shit. They should have known. He, he's from Alabama, Huntsville. You know, no, the, you know, he didn't play in the OHL or WHL. He's a terrible goalie. And I would always argue with him. Well, okay, fair enough. But he almost won the Vesna Trophy like last year. Like, can you at least acknowledge that? Like, no, they should have known. So, and I probably spent a little too much time with him. And now when he calls in, I'm just like, okay, you know, he calls. He has something to say but it's the same now he called in this year and like why why didn't they sign a younger goalie it's like well okay so like it's not even a point like (laughs) it's you know he has these points that aren't even points so i just kind of like well if they had a if they had a younger goalie that could play they they, he'd be on the roster i mean i'm not going to spend 10 minutes with this guy arguing with them and getting to him to list off goalies because he he probably can't so I, i i'm very concerned about I'm very yes, I am wearing sweatpants, everybody. I just put on a Def, <laughs> Def Leppard shirt, but I'm not wearing Def right. Leppard jeans. Uh, I I'm very conscious of the pacing of the show. I am very very conscious of the pacing of the show. And the one thing that that I I would say is is if if somebody turns off the radio, it is. It is always my fault. So it, at least that's how I have to approach it. Because if there is a, a caller that comes on and, you know, he just, it's, it's, it's just a bad call or he's not making sense or he's overly aggressive or he's meandering, you know, I try to give everybody their time and let them make the point. But, there, but there's a point where, you know, I got to stay in control of the show. And I still think ultimately people want to hear from Rob and they want to hear post-game interviews more than they want to hear other fans, even though the call-in is an element to the show. So if there is like a caller and it's like 20 seconds in, okay, I think he's getting off the rails here a little bit. And then a minute in, he's just so loopy and offensive or crazy that people start changing the channel. The, my boss the next day is not going to say, well, you know, the rating is cratered, but the, what, what could have you done? The guy was, the guy was out of control. No, no, it was on me to control that. It was on yeah. me to say, okay, okay. You know what? We hear you. We hear you're upset. Let's, let's take a deep breath and either just move on or bring Rob in or, or, or rein the guy in. So that's, you know, the, the pacing is very important. You got to hit everything, all the points you need. You got to get all the interviews in. You want to give people, time to talk but that doesn't mean unlimited time to talk that it becomes that it becomes their show so i'm very very i'm very conscious of that the pacing of the show um and and getting through it without you know losing control of it to something that isn't interesting or doesn't engage people yeah i yeah i and i've always i've i've done a few call-ins uh when we've done the live stream so and, I'm gonna call uh, in some night. Yeah, yeah, no, I've quit doing it because 
frankly, like it's 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 just hard. Like you have to be experienced. Some, you know, I've obviously you you know you probably spent some time around some call-ins before you actually did it on your own. I mean, you you saw some of the cues. You've got a producer who can you know mute a caller if you if you need it. And I you know I have it at my at my fingertips with the setup that I have. But you know I the same you know I know exactly what you're saying. I mean, people. You know, they they take control of the conversation if that's the kind of person they are and they want to. And, and you have to take it back. And uh, so, you know, I, I and I think sports, right, like, you know, if you're doing a sports talk show or a, or a politics talk show. Those are, you know, two areas where people are, are generally the most opinionated. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I, you know, I couldn't do it. I admire the fact that you can and that, yeah, you know, you keep that pacing uh, going and and. Um, you're right. I, you know, it's got to be. People need an outlet. I think, especially for a team like the Oilers, it's you know, in the slump that they are in, uh, minus one year. You know, and and uh, so you know, you as crazy as it sounds, you provide a service to the fans. That's uh, <laughs> well, that's you know that's I you know I think somewhat you know important if you you know if you take some enjoyment out of it. We all need enjoyment right now of some sort. So I mean, that's as good as any. Well, that's right. good to hear, and I and I try to, um, and definitely, I mean, the the first the first year, I, I was uh, I was not ready, and I was terrible. But I think probably <laughs> by probably by the third year, I'd really, you know, and Rob and I together too had found a groove and found a good tone and and you know a good pace to the to the show. But I I try to tell myself, um. Well, I do. I do tell myself that okay, someone is calling you. Like they they are calling to talk to you. Like that's a big deal. Like they're maybe confiding. Like they they're taking the time to dial the phone and and talk to us. So that's maybe that's a big deal for them. Maybe they're nervous. And I always I also tell myself maybe this person has no one else to talk to. Like they really want to talk to about talk to somebody about the game. But there's just no one there. Maybe they're the only one in their household that's interested in hockey. Maybe they just don't have that connection with other people. So I always try to tell myself that. Now, again, of course, limits with you know how <laughs> aggressive you are and the, and the and the language used. And as I mentioned, like the guy I mentioned earlier, I don't really care what his backstory is. I just think he's kind of a jerk <laughs> at, this, at, at this point. But I always you know try to figure. Okay, somebody took the time to call. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt to hear what they have to say. But speaking of what, of what you were saying too, and what I was saying about pacing of the show, people, th- th- these are, are quote unquote regular people. They probably don't speak in public or at least not on a broadcast all the time. So what I've noticed too is, and this, this is not necessarily a bad thing. A, a, a guy will make his point in 20 seconds. And then he keeps going and he's kind of making the same point again. Cause they like people don't know where to stop. And I think that's nerves and just not used to actually, holy shit, I'm on the radio. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's that point where it's like, okay. So that's where I worry too. Okay. Okay. He's repeating himself. I'm going to, I'm going to just jump in and say, okay, yeah, we hear you. And then, then we can kind of address that. Whatever his yeah. point is. I, I mean, yeah, you, um, you know, I, I do, um, uh... You know, the job that pays my podcasting bills, as I say, uh, is in tech and it, and it's a sales oriented position. And I think, you know, the 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 rules are the same. We need to ask and we need to listen and and direct conversations the same. Uh, you know, and I think that um, as as the prior producer of uh, Oilers now, right, went on to the sales position, Right. That's and right. He, yeah. You know, he spent some time. So he, he understands. I mean, you get um, you get some of these skills. They're transferable to uh, so many different areas. So if you if you ever decide to retire from <laughs> from the uh, sports, See, but that, that's, me, maybe we got a sales job for you. That is that is one thing that I, I'm not used to. And I don't know if like you just referenced Brendan Ulrich. So he mm-hmm. made a career choice and you know what it was. And other people know what it was. And because he was on a show that involved the Oilers and on the station that covers the Oilers, uh, you know, people people know about that and and keep track of stuff. And I I I, uh, I mean, I don't get spoken to in public a, a lot, but you got to remember when I say something on air. There's no 
like I, I, I this okay, this is going to sound dumb, but when I say something on air, there is nothing going through my mind thinking, oh, geez, other people heard that. Because I'm sitting alone in, in a room, especially now that I'm yeah. at home. I don't even see Kellen. So I, I, I know that might, like, I, obviously I know people are listening, but I don't really think that people are going to listen and remember it if I say something personal beyond the Def Leppard and Blockbuster stuff, which I've made kind of a shtick out of <laughs> yeah. by this point. But, you know, somebody came up to me once and said something, uh, you know, I, about my mom. And I'm like, I'm like, excuse me, like, how do you know that? Well, well you mentioned that about her on air. I'm like, Oh shit! Yeah, I did. Like, I forgot someone would have heard that. But the but remember it like months later and say like, oh yeah, you're like. So I I still I, I still don't. I, I still that's still weird to me. That I mean I understand it I suppose, but it's sometimes it's still kind of like, oh geez, like if I say something about my life, like that's gonna stick with somebody. I don't know. <laughs> it probably will and stick with a couple people. I guess the uh, the one advantage you have is you've got a, uh, you know, uh, uh, somebody up, <laughs> up in administration that would tell you if you said something you shouldn't say. Oh, I'm yeah, sure for sure. Get... Oh, yeah. Like, I don't go, like, off, like, super personal or whatever, but just sometimes yeah. little life details or yeah or whatever or the name of a dog. And then somebody will write in, like, oh, I heard you got a dog named this. It's like, oh, yeah, I do. I guess I told people that. Because, <laughs> like, literally, I'm just talking. Like, if there was nobody listening, I would probably be exactly the same on air. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, and that's what you referenced earlier with Bob, right? Like, uh, same on air, same off air. And, and um, I, you know, I found that, um, and I've talked to a few folks, you know, uh, in and around the uh, media with the Oilers and and, uh, and then had the opportunity to meet them outside. And, and yeah, I, I think to really... You know, the the folks that are good at, at what you do, that that's exactly it. They bring their personality to um, to the radio or TV or, or whatever. And and that personality works. And, and that's why, you know, you know, a long term career is made out of it for sure. Uh, I got to ask, I mean, so you've been with on the Oilers broadcast for eight years. In that time, you had the uh, the the one playoff run. By the way, I was in San Jose for that. Uh, whooping playoff game <laughs> they lost seven nothing yeah jeez yeah. of all the ones to go to okay yeah. <laughs> yeah we uh we flew out there just for the game and flew back and uh oh, <laughs> wow. you, and had to like i've been to san jose for a number of games i'm in the tech industry and and so you know i'm, I'm out in that area when you can travel and i get out there a fair bit and i've been out there for playoff games they're they're actually great fans. They fill a, a rink most nights. It's California is a great hockey uh, community. The you know all of California, whether it's you know minor leagues or uh, or pro like uh, NHL. But the fans aren't. It's not like uh, going to Philadelphia, right? Where if you wore an Oilers jersey in Philadelphia, you know you better hope that you got big friends <laughs> or right. you know you're packing or or something, right? Like you you don't want to go in there as a opposing team. But if you're in San Jose, it, it generally doesn't it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, I, I uh, watched a number of different teams there, and um, and the and the fans usually like. So half of them are paying attention and the other half are having fun and, and right. uh, doing other things. But I happen to be by the most rambunctious Sharks fan ever. I don't even know where I was going with this story to begin with, but I was at that game and he was, of course, you know, seven, nothing. And, uh, Oh, I now remember totally off track. Uh, anyway, at the end of the day, I had to go to that game and I had to sit. I actually said, remember Cates was at that game with his kids and, and Gretzky was there. I was sitting right in front of them. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, and uh, they were in their own box. I didn't have my own box, uh, but I was sitting right in front of them and they left after the second period. Like, cause it was just, uh, that was when dry did the, the uh, stick check in between the legs there and ended up with the suspension. Uh, or oh, yeah, I fine? forgot about that. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. yeah, I think he was yeah. fine. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So <laughs> back to my original. What I was going to go with though, because that's the only time they've done really well in the old time you've been on the broadcast. Like, how good did that feel to get on like 
like a playoff overtime open line after a win like did, was that a different feeling like how good was that uh well it was i but i this i really mean this like i was really just happy for the fans more than anything i mean my my emotional reaction to to the team and in some ways sports in general has changed being in the business so yeah. I, I i would remind people of that that at when the game ends my f- my first reaction is not one of emotion. I, I'm aware when they play shitty or when they play better, because obviously we were talking about that, but um, I, have a lo- I have a lot of work to do between the end of the game and the yeah. start of overtime open line. So uh, it's organizing everything in my head, you know, making sure some stuff I do for the web is done, getting ready, coordinating what audio we have. So that's just sort of a little behind the scenes thing. But I, I think it just, it was just nice that people were encouraged and it felt like even that year, okay, they're probably not good enough to win the Stanley cup, but maybe, you know, maybe we'll see how far they can go. But I, I was really just, just happy for the fans. And it was nice to be hearing from people who'd been beaten down for so long, like, Hey, another round, like maybe we're going to go to the cup and even, even having, the controversy of the goalie interference and blowing that three goal lead. Like at least it was in the playoffs, you know, like at least it was really important. It wasn't like, well, they're already a last place team. Of course they're going to blow a three point to three goal lead in the last <laughs> four minutes and lose it overtime. Like at least the, the, the stakes were, were high for a game like that. So I, I, I just, I, I will tell you though, Michael, like I don't, I, I really don't, tie how I feel about my job or my own performance into the quality of the team. Like I, I just couldn't do that. Maybe some broadcasters do that. I couldn't do that because I think if you were covering a bad team, I, I'd go crazy. And if the team wins, it, it had literally has nothing to do with me or Rob or anybody on air, like nothing. Yeah. So why am I like, I, I still remember the year, uh, so the, when we were talking about they they started the year after they made the playoffs really poorly, and one of the games they won was they they beat New Jersey I think six four, and the fans were happy they scored okay maybe they're getting back on track it's still early I still remember that, so that would have been the fall of 2017 I still remember that overtime open line as one of the shittiest shows I've ever had, and people you know, people were happy and, and I just had a shitty show I still remember it. my. But my delivery was off. My my pacing were was poor. Uh, you know, I missed a couple cues, and I just remember going home after that show, being like, well, "What are you doing? Like, is that the quality you're going to deliver? Like, you got to you can't have a show that that poor." And the team had won. You know, yeah. so obviously the energy level and interaction with callers is different if they're a good or a bad team. But I but I have to remember my performance has to be at a consistent level all the time. And I also think even though certainly, you know, after a game like last night, like, you know, and, and Saturday, like Rob and I are like, Hey, like they're terrible. Like there are problems. Those have to be addressed. But I also think now this is my approach to the job. So if other people approach really differently, I'm not saying that that's wrong and, and I'm right. I'm just saying my approach to the job and what I think works for me and the type of show I want to present is I don't, I don't think, that people want to tune in and hear somebody as emotional or more emotional than they are. I think they want to hear analysis and thoughtfulness and yeah, maybe some emotion and and maybe some anger, but I just think if I had been doing this for seven years and four games and flipping out one way or the other, based on the result, I really think that would tire the audience out after a while. I, I, yeah. re- I really think, and I think it would tire me out. Like I, I, I don't think people turn and maybe, maybe I'm wrong, I, but I, I don't think people turn on the show to see, well, let's how, let's see how pissed off Reed is going to get. Cause they lost a the game. I think they're tuning in to say like, okay, they lost. Let's hear what these guys have to say about it. Like let's, let's hear them break it down. I, yeah, I'd sooner, I, you know... I'd sooner present something hopefully intelligent and analytical than just, you know, frenzied and my feelings are hurt because the team lost. Yeah, I'd suggest to you that we've seen 
that media personality come to Edmonton and fail a couple of times. You know, the folks that are a little bit maybe too emotional, especially covering, you know, what is, you know, has been an underperforming team for, you know, the greater part of a decade and, and a little bit longer. Right. And so if you get, you know, if you get too emotional about it, you know, you're certainly not going to win over the fans. Right. I mean, there has to be, I think you have to be even keel, right. You can't be too excited if they win because, well, we know they, (laughs) you know, they might have it a trail of losses coming right after that. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's switch gears. Let's talk a little bit about, yeah, sorry if I'm talking too uh, much. No, (laughs) yeah, yeah. (laughs) Let's talk, let's chat a little bit about the hockey. I mean, I, I, all of this stuff has been said, I, I, you know, I'm kind of curious to get your kind of feel for it. And, and, uh, I listened to your show tonight, you know, a good show and, and, so it, there's a couple folks that um, you yeah, had made some suggestions um, at Dean's Thumbs, I think on on Twitter, and actually he's a, um, a Halifax guy as well. There's a great. Uh, I don't know if you know the Nova Scotia Oilers used to play here in the eighties. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And uh, by the way, uh, if anybody's listening and they have a jersey that they can get to me, uh, I'd really love one. I want <laughs> one awesome. for for the back, but. Um, I shouldn't say if anybody's listening, but to the listeners <laughs> out in the ether. Uh, anyway, uh, he, he asked, you know, what's your thought on, and, and I, you know, I can guess your answer on this, but having pull RV ride it out on night with uh, McDavid's line. I, I mean, uh, you know, I've listened to most of uh, Tippett's um, commentary. I, I don't know that I've heard anybody ask that question uh, directly, but um you know, what's your thought on that? Is is this going to happen at all anytime soon? Probably not, and I don't think it should. I mean, I'm just, I, I just, like, I, like I think it's at the point. Like, what's the fascination with this kid? You know, like, uh, let him play on the third line. Let him learn how to make a five foot pass that's not a slap shot to a teammate. And quit tweeting about expected goals because his actual goals is zero. Okay? Those are the ones that count. I, I mean, I, I hope someday he is a first-line player. And, and maybe they're going to shuffle the lines up tomorrow and he's going to play with McDavid. But the, the problem with the Oilers this year isn't where Pugliarvi is or isn't. It's a, it's a whole bunch of other things. Uh, I mean, look, if if he goes with Big David, I, I, I hope he does well. I, I just think that there's so much dialogue in some corners that re- revolves around this one player who's never really proven himself to be an NHL player and who, even in these four games, has been wildly up, up and down and still, quite frankly, looks very nervous at times. Like we it's saw him try a wrist story. shot That's f- and fall down for, right? last night. You know, like... Yeah. That doesn't happen in, in, in the NHL. But he's, you know, he's trying to body check and he's keeping some plays alive and he's made some good passes. Uh, I just don't know if putting him with with McDavid um, just instantly saves the team. I mean, there has to be more results from what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I agree with that. I I, I think that, um, I don't know if it was exactly what I'd say, but uh, I I think people want a feel-good story, <laughs> right? Like, they like Well, the sure, kids, and, the, it's, right? and yeah. the person who's not getting, I mean, it's the backup quarterback syndrome, right? And yeah. like, do I, do I think Ryan McLeod should have been sent to the minors? No, I would have liked to see him play in the NHL, but I'm also not, you know, in the camp where it's like, oh, yeah, Ryan McLeod will come in and fix the team. <laughs> Like, you, you know, when you're losing, anything looks like a good solution where it's often not that simple. Yeah. Now, here's the next one uh, that was asked, um, which, which you know, everybody's talked about is the dry line, 93-29-56. Uh, Tippett was asked about it, as everybody knew. I mean, it, you know, and he knew. He knew he was going to get asked. He kind of glazed over it, I thought. Right? Yeah. Like, he, he kind of said, yeah, you know, I'm trying lots of things and move on. Uh if, I mean, is there here one one person last night suggested? Well, maybe McDavid said something like he doesn't want to play with you know shit players. Let's say, right? Um, you know, I mean, maybe he's put some demands, and we we know, you know, I, or at least I think we know that Gretzky had some demands like that when he was a player, right? Um, 
you know, there's some talk of him talking to coaches. McDavid's certainly worthy of having that conversation with a coach. I mean, he's earned it. He's he's just that type of player. Is that one possibility, or or what do you think the reason for it? We haven't seen them together since February of 20, 2020, right? I mean, I the the Nugent Hopkins Dry Settle Yamamoto line. Yeah. Yes, and I and I think that line should be together because it's proven to be good. Yeah. Uh, and I think maybe you give some other guys you signed a chance to to play with McDavid. I know why they're doing it, I've, and I'm sure McDavid likes playing with Nugent Hopkins. I'm not sure if their styles gel as much because McDavid scores more off the rush, and I think Nugent scores more off the cycle, though they, they, they've obviously had some good games together. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if McDavid specifically says, I, I want to play with this guy, and that's the only way it is. But certainly coaches will talk to players and say, uh, okay, you know, how, how have you felt about the times you've been on the ice? I mean, it's like it's like a boss might go to the next in command and say, okay, we're promoting somebody. What's your experience with these four players? The second in command doesn't get the decision, but the boss is, is going <laughs> to yeah. listen because he, he knows he's in that spot that's kind of what i i would think it's probably likely i don't think mcdavid has made demands or made refusals to play with other players i, I think he probably likes playing with nuge because he's better than some, most other line mates he he could have it, it's it's tough because they're looking for somebody else to step up whether it's puliarvi tourists or cahoon uh, i mean cassian's only had one good game out of three really um you know archibald hasn't uh hasn't scored and we're at the point where Okay, four games in is still a small sample size, but it's still like, okay, you should have a depth goal besides Devin Shore shorthanded when Montreal didn't care about the game at that point. You know, yeah. you know it just made a bad mistake. So that's, you know, it, it is, and the whole line combination thing, I, I do think we talk about it a little too much sometimes because I, I think it's, for the Oilers, it's more how they're playing, not who's playing with who. But I, but I am ready to see the dry sidle Nugent Hopkins Yamamoto line reunited because he was such a weapon last year, and I think you have to give them a chance to establish some momentum, and maybe that pulls other guys along. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I would love to see the the line reunited. I so here, you know, it's the follow up to that, and uh, Ethan uh, is the fellow's name that asked, and and um, and I don't think he is, but uh, you think at at some point like Tippett's on the hot seat at all uh, this year, if this continues on or. No, not or, unless they're like two and yeah. 15 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I can't see that. And I don't think they will be too. I, th- I think it would have to be just a complete disaster. And I also have to think, you remember, I, I think that. The, I mean, certainly the coach determines the line combinations, but I think he and Holland have a plan for how they want big David and dry deployed. Yeah. So I don't think that it's like, oh, like he split those guys up and Holland was like, oh, I can't believe he's like, I, I think they reached a point last year where it's like, if we're going to be good, you guys are on separate lines. And when it let us fill in the, the other line. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to talk about firing a coach. I mean, you can't just go down that road again. Not this team, <laughs> not this team, not anytime soon. I, I, I hope anyway. And, and, uh, they've certainly, I think at that point, you know, if you go through another coach, then you start worrying about, um, you know, whether McDavid starts to ask to be, yeah. Cause then there's yeah. so much instability. It's like, yeah. okay. You know, like you hope that Todd McClellan was going to be his coach for half his career. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with you know, one of the things that I'm kind of curious about, and maybe you have some insight in it, or maybe you don't, but obviously the, this is a different season. Everything about it's different. Like, how are they, what are they doing in terms of preparing for games, right? I mean, they're not getting the same practice time in. No. Are they? Have they been practicing at all outside of uh, yet? Or um, I know they're doing a they, lot of video that's been talked about. Like, do you know? They I'd, practiced... Um... They had an optional practice Friday that almost everybody was on the ice for. Sunday was off. Uh, well, and then yesterday was the morning skate in the game, and they didn't skate today. They just flew to Toronto. So, yeah, they're going to lose. All teams will lose some some travel days. That's going to be it, – it will be more video, you know. Yeah. It will be 
probably maybe going out there for an optional skate and, and going hard for a while and getting off. And that, 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 that and no preseason games will have an impact because a lot of the stuff you're working on is just hypothetical, but you haven't actually had a lot of chances to execute it. Yeah. The, uh, the one thing that I, I was, um, well, here first, first before that, watching the game last night, is that McDavid's worst game ever? Like, I mean, that was, yeah, that I was would be on a short list, you know, that, yeah. that neither game was, was very good. And probably for Nuge too, that it yeah. just wasn't, wasn't very good. I mean, Nuge is, uh, you know, he's flubbed a couple passes, obviously that have led the chances against and McDavid. I mean, he took that game over to such an extent against the Canucks that I wondered if that was going to happen last night, where it's like, okay, they beat us five one. I, I am not letting this, this happened, but also maybe Montreal is better than I thought. I mean, you look at that defense now after playing those two games, it's like, yeah, they're, they could do a little bit of everything. That's pretty good. But I mean, what McDavid's without a point in, is it uh three of the first? No, he got an assist on Cuckoo's goal, I think. Anyway. I mean, yeah, he's he got helped. an assist on So he's still, him being held pointless two out of four is unusual. It is unusual. I, 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 I remember a couple of years ago, he'd, he'd never gone like more than two games without a point. And, uh, and it's not, you know, it's not surprising, even just the minutes he plays, you'd expect, you know, if the Oilers are on the board that he'll, he'll get in. So one of the thoughts, which leads me to this, you know, lines three and four, you know, I listen to you, listen to Stoffer, you know, everybody, guys on TSN, low tide, everybody always talks about lines three and four, specifically on the Oilers as having one job. Right? right, keep the puck out of the net. <laughs> is do you think at some at some level maybe that's a bit of a problem? Do you know what I mean? Yes, because uh, like, I, I think line three should be able to score. That's right. Like, right. Quite frankly, if you look at Boston and St. Louis, line four has been able to score too. Yeah. So, so are, but, but is that, start is with that line three. Coaching staff saying that, like, are they say are they? Do you think they're saying the same message? Like, keep the puck out of the net, or are they? No, I think they want him to attack, yeah. especially the tourists, Pugliarvi, and whoever line. I think they expect that line to attack if they can. I, I know, uh, I think tourists has a lot of D zone starts and stuff like that, but I, I just think that's because that's, you know, not one of the top two lines that they would yeah. say for the offensive zone. But no, I, I maybe with your fourth line, you would say, okay, just be even all year and play hard minutes and kill penalties. But I, I think. To be good in the NHL this these days, you need line three to score at least somewhat. And again, to get back like by four by four games into the season, I would have hoped you know at least Tourist would. I mean, Tourist doesn't have a point, right? No. So I would have hoped yeah, yeah. that there, there'd be something on the score sheet from that line, and there really hasn't been. That, so that's another. That's but but as you said, the the bigger problem is that the big guys haven't done it the last couple of games, five on five, nor on the power play. They didn't lose the last two games because of their depth. They lost no. top down. In fact, I, you know, and I don't disagree with how Tippett said it. They had they had some good compete last game, right? And they just, you know, that top line didn't do what they were supposed to do. Uh, and that, you know, I I know, you know, people will want to blame it on Koskinen. Uh, I think that's that's a partial problem too. I, I I think you know, in in a number of the years, the Oilers have had goalies that never made the big save when you needed it. Right. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you play, uh, I'd love, I'd love to get, um, do you play, by the way, do you play hockey? Much? No, not for years. No. Okay. No. So, you know, Just I like I, very poorly. I play a lot. It's obviously, yeah, I, I, uh, I play a lot and, and, uh, it's not obviously the same caliber, but you know, I've played some high, high caliber games and, and I can tell you if you have a goalie that lets in an easy one, it really lets the wind out of your sails. And if, if they let in a couple easy ones over the course of one or two games, you switch the style of game that you play. And, you know, you, you start playing, which we just talked about, that game of let's not let the puck go. Let's not, not even let the puck go to the net, right? Let's, right. you know, yeah. let's, let's play to make sure they don't get any shots, which in the NHL, I just don't think works, right? And, um you know, I think uh, last night, you know, that um, Romanov uh, goal was was pretty darn weak. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of goal I think just demolishes a team inside. 
uh, Salo knows everything about that. You know, like um, it changed the way his, you know, his whole career. Yep. Um, you know, I, I, I want to see, I would like to see uh, something done. Have you have, you have any thoughts on on how they're going to approach this goaltending situation? Any I, I idea know. when Smith is coming back? Well, or? Holland was on with me before the game on Saturday and said he should be back after 12 games, after the 24 days. So, so Grosnick maybe plays one game. He might play a game, might play two if he plays well. But yeah, it's not it's not ideal goaltending wise. Uh, and yeah, that was a bad goal by Koskinen. Probably none of the other goals were bad, but he didn't make enough saves. And it was just weird last night how he didn't know where the puck was for the first 30 minutes of the game. I thought he was a little better in the second there. half of the second period. But, yeah, like he's looking all over. And I'm thinking, okay, once or twice, maybe, sure. But every rebound, you have no idea where it's going? Like, I'm glad you said that because I thought the same thing. And I, it's kind of popped out of my head. But I, it actually felt like there was something wrong with him. Right, yeah. like how disoriented he was. So you're right. If you're not, if he's not confident, does that affect the rest of the way that the team plays? Where it's like, oh my God, we can't even give up a, a shot on goal. But they need, like Tippett said, they need to battle harder in the key areas. Like you, they're like it's like they're engaging in battles, but there's not that extra oomph that you need to yeah. actually win the battle or delay the guy or take his stick away or make sure you're getting the puck out. That's that's what I want to see tomorrow is, you know, don't just engage in the battle. Like, play desperate in the battle. Play like if you don't win it, that's the worst thing that could happen in the game. Yeah. Is is Neil uh, going to try in tomorrow? He I might. Think? I don't know if he's going to yeah. try in tomorrow. Uh, but, yeah, Tippett said he and Haas were going on the trip, so that's all I have on yeah. that. Yeah, I think that would be uh, – I, I, you know, it's hard to believe that, you know, he, he seems like a key piece – uh, given where he sort of finished the season, but obviously the power play needs something a little bit different, and, and Neil brings that. And I, you know, I don't. And you're you're closer to the team than obviously most of us. Does he make a, a difference around the team? I mean, he's you know he's a he's a vet, and and he's a guy that you know he's played hard most of his career. D- do you notice anything different ever when you got a personality like that around the team? I think a little bit. I think from being in the room last year, you, Smith's more of a kind of an outgoing guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't think Neil hurt, uh, hurts be just because he's veteran and he can still, I mean, clearly his skating is not where you'd, you'd like it to be, but I still think he can play with a bit of an edge and he understands some of the gamesmanship that's involved. And he actually was pretty good in the playoffs. Yep. And even that goal, um, I think it was the goal chase on scored where Neil just barged to the net and he said, okay, like, this is a straight line situation. Like I'm going to the net and who's coming with me to clean it up. And that worked right. So I think, you know, the power play has to be better though, because they still have to shoot. It doesn't matter who's in front of the net. If there are no rebounds, because they're not shooting, but yeah. certainly Neil has better touch on those than, than chase on. I'm just not sure what we're going to get out of Neil because so much of his season last year was the explosion in October and then the injury. And then, you know, you did, you kind of didn't really know what you were going to get. Yeah. All right. But well, yeah, so we're going to uh, wind down here. I, I'm, I'm curious. One last thing, kind of. You know, does this, given what the horses this team has, you know, like obviously, you know, we're missing some on the goaltending. Defense clearly seems to be a bit of a problem. Either it's your pairings right now or whichever. Uh, you know, I'd I'd love to. Yeah, I, as I, I think I said to you before we started recording, people are probably tuning out about this point in the podcast. Uh, but one day I'd love to hear what you think about Larson. But does this team have what it takes to turn this season around? I mean, outside of the obvious two, Drysaddle and McDavid. I the, think they do yeah. because, like I said earlier, the players have played better. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the players have more to give and we've seen them play better and we've seen them with more detail. So I, yeah, I, I don't think the season's a right out now. If they go one and three on this road trip and are two and six, then you're already like, geez, they got to win, you know, 30 out of 48 to, to get in. So that would be, yeah. that would be concerning. But I, I, I do think they, they, they can play better. I mean, that's, that's my short answer. They can play better and I think they will. It just needs to happen sooner rather than later. 
Four games ago, where did you have them finishing? Second to Calgary. Yeah, to Calgary. Yeah, really. Not to go well, partially out of stubbornness. I didn't pick the Leafs first because so many people were. Yeah, I like I like to make different predictions. I don't have to be <laughs> as unbiased as you, so I just put Calgary on the bottom <laughs> oh, <laughs> every wow. single time. Yeah, I'm not oh, sure no, about no, that. I, that's that's yeah, that's yeah, bold I of you. Calgary, uh, <laughs> I I'm. Uh, you know, I'd probably eat my words on that whole Markstrom thing. I was I was happy that um, Holland didn't end up getting him, but uh, he seems to be doing doing it well, all right. Well, there's no doubt he's good. It's just what it would have done to the salary structure for the Oilers to pay another guy that much. Yeah, and, and we've had great success with those kind of long term uh, big contracts. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> it is nice. I'll tell you this, uh, and we'll close. It. It's nice to have Holland. Uh, come in and uh, love or hate Shirelli, and most people, you know, weren't big fans. Most fans weren't big fans. Um, yeah, Holland is is as patient a uh, GM as as you'll ever meet, right? Like he, I I I sat uh, beside him at the Marriott once. Uh, I I was there, you know, a couple of years ago. I had the season tickets, and so I would always stay at the Marriott, and and um, I'm sitting in there in the uh, the lounge there and he he comes in with a friend and uh, they sit right behind me so but you know i had the podcast at the time so i thought i'd listen in and <laughs> see if i could hear anything <laughs> you know like uh you know have maybe the odd chance that a podcast gets some breaking news and and i'll tell the only thing i took away from it is uh at, i don't how old is he he's in his 60s right yeah. um of course, Mark Messier is 60. I heard you talking about that the other day or today. Uh, anyway, um, he is sharp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know, if I'm anything like him when I'm in my 60s, I, I, I sure hope I hope to hell that I am because that, he is a smart, smart man. And that's that's all I took from that conversation that I eavesdropped on <laughs> the whole time. But but, uh, you know, he was actually. Um, I think I, I don't remember the exact gist of it, but he was talking about whether kids should play in college. Uh, whoever his friend was um, in oh, the yeah. NCAA versus uh, junior hockey and, and some of the ins and outs, and which would have no interest to the people that listen to the podcast here. But uh, I, I found quite interesting, but yeah. very shy. guy. That's know. cool. All right. Uh, I should have ended it with you saying something prolific that uh, could have. <laughs> well, did, you would not get that for me. So that's okay. <laughs> I uh, I do appreciate uh, you taking some time. Um, you know, it's um, it's an interesting. Uh, somebody mentioned Dan from uh, Oilers Nation. He he put out that um, we're approaching a new era uh, with the Oilers, which is you know there's I'm one of uh, I, there's I think about a thousand and ten different Oilers pods out there now. Oh wow! Yeah, I don't Jeez. know. There's, there are literally, there's a new one popping up every day. And, uh, and, uh, and, you know, I started this four years ago and I remember doing the research on whether or not I actually wanted to do it. And there were about three or four that were worth, you know, listening to. And, um, you know, and now it's, it's super simple to start your own broadcast and, and do all of that. And of course it puts some effort into the, into how I put it together, but, um, you know, it's, it, we, we're really lucky, you know, I said that about the media, but lucky about having the fans as engaged as they are. Um, you know, I, and, and without guys like you and, and, and the rest that, um, you know, give us the time of day to, to chat with you and hear some of the inside, uh, you know, what's going on, you know, you, this is your job, right. And so you, you know, you have the luxury that most of us don't have where you, you know, when you go to watch what the Oilers are doing every day, you're going to, in some way, you're getting paid to do that. And and when I do that, you know, my boss inevitably says, Hey, maybe you should do some work. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, but I do appreciate you, you know, putting in the extra hour and a bit uh, tonight and, and um, hopefully I get you back on. Uh, And uh, you know, thanks for, thanks for doing what you do. Uh, I love listening to your show and, and uh, really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate it, and thanks a lot for having me on. I'd be happy to do it again. Excellent. And this has been the Heavy Hockey Podcast with Reed Wilkins, host of Inside Sports and uh, Overtime Open Line. Thanks again. 
from Section 204, Heavy Hockey Podcast with Michael and Guess. Heavy Hockey isn't dead, it's just getting started.